This is the case number IT zero two sixty one S. The prosecutor versus Miloslav Doronicic. Thank you. And may I have the appearances, please? First, the prosecution. Good afternoon, Mr. President, Your Honors, Counsel. My name is Mark Harmon. Appearing with me is Ms. Lisa Lot Carlson, the case manager. Thank you. And for the defense, please. Dobar dan, časni sude, uvažene kolege. Ja sam advokat Slobodan Cvjetić, branilac sam optuženo. Your Honors, I am Slobodan Cvjetić, counsel for the accused Deronić, and next to me is Slobodan Zečević, the my co-counsel for Mr. Deronić. Thank you. And may I finally ask Mr. Deronić, can you follow the proceedings in a language you understand? I apologize, Your Honors, but I'm not getting the translation. Can you hear me now in a language you understand? Yes, I hear you now, Your Honor. Thank you. Before announcing the highly disputed sentencing judgment in this case, I should like to thank everybody having assisted in the preparation, translation and editing of this judgment. In particular, I wish to express my gratitude to Mrs. Rosa Salipikova, Ms. Anja Streifert, Mr. Jan Nemitz. The following is a summary of the child's chamber's judgment, which will be made available in English, French, and BCS at the end of this session. However, the only authoritative account of this child chamber's findings and of its reasons for those findings is to be found in the written judgment. The accused. Mr. Miroslav Deronic was born the 6th of June 1954 in the municipality of Bratonac. Miroslav Deronic was invited the 3rd of July 2002. The trial chamber wishes to emphasize that it is seized only of Miroslav Deronic's criminal responsibility for persecutions committed on the 9th of May 1992 in the village of Glogova. It is for this trial chamber to balance the extreme gravity of the crimes against his contribution to coming closer to the truth by inter alia accepting his individual responsibility for the crimes committed this single day. The 6th of July 2002, Miroslav Deronic was arrested in Bratunac and transferred to the United Nations Detention Unit on the 8th of July 2002. At his initial appearance, on the 10th of July 2002, Miroslav Deronic pleaded not guilty to all the six counts of the initial indictment that has been amended twice. The latest version of September 2003 reduced to only one charge of persecutions pursuant to Article 5H of the statute forms the basis of these proceedings. The accused pleaded guilty to this indictment. It forms part of a plea agreement submitted jointly by the parties together with a separate factual basis. 
The trial chamber ordered proprio motu an expert report on the accused social background, which was submitted by Ms. Anja Neumann from Belgrade. The trial chamber admitted further into evidence an expert report on sentencing law compiled by Professor Dr. Ulrich Siebe, director of the Max Planck Institute for Foreign and International Criminal Law in Freiburg, Germany, in the Dragan Nikolic case. A sentencing hearing was held on the 27th, 28th January and 5th of March 2004. The accused testified as a witness on 27th January. The trial chamber will first turn to the professional career of Miroslav Dironic and then to the facts of the case. From September 1990 to the end of April 1992, Miroslav Deronic was president of the Bratunac Municipal Board of the Serbian Democratic Party, SDS, of Bosnia and Herzegovina. He was president of three crisis staffs in the municipality of Bratunac from October 1991 through June 1992. The Bratunac crisis staff was established by the end of April 1992 when it took over authority from the Executive Committee of the Municipality and the organs of the Municipal Assembly. It was transformed to a war commission established by the Presidency of the Serb Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina in June 1992, Miroslav Deronic being member of it. In summer 1993, he became a member of the main board of the STS. On the 11th of July 1995, Miroslav Dironic was appointed a civilian commissioner for Srebrenica municipality. In 1996, he became vice president of the STS under President Karadzic until Miroslav Dironic's resignation in 1997. The municipality of Bratunac, located in the eastern part of the Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina, was of major strategic significance to the Bosnian Serbs, linking this area to a contiguous Serbian state. According to the 1991 census, the municipality of Bratunac consisted of 33,619 inhabitants. Nearly two-thirds were Bosnian Muslims, nearly one-third were Bosnian Serbs. The village of Glogova, located in this municipality, was predominantly inhabited by Bosnian Muslims prior to the 9th of May 1992. Its population in 1991 consisted of 1,913 residents, of whom 1,901 were Muslims. From April to December 1991, a number of preparatory meetings were held by the Bosnian Serb leadership, creating the idea of Greater Serbia cleansed from all other ethnicities. The development culminated in a meeting held on the 19th of December 1991, presided over by Radovan Karadzic. He declared that a state would be firm formed a Serb Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina. The presidents of the municipal boards, including Miroslav Dironic, were given strictly confidential written instructions. They were directed to municipalities where Bosnian Serbs constituted either a majority of the population 
variant A, or a minority of the population, variant B. The municipality of Bratunac was a variant B municipality. In spring of 1992, an armed conflict between Serbs and non-Serbs broke out in the Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Military forces carried out widespread and systematic attacks against the Bosnian Muslim population of this region. In April, May 1992, the accused was aware that for the aforementioned common purpose, the use of force has also been planned and had already been implemented in neighboring municipalities. The accused acted accordingly in Glogova. The use of force included inter alia forcible removal of the Muslim population from their homes and the use of arms against Bosnian Muslims, many of whom were killed during these events. The municipality of Bratunac was taken over by its Bosnian Serb forces on the 17th April 1992. Between the end of April and early May 1992, Miroslav Dironic, exercising de facto and de jure control as president of the Bratunac crisis staff over the TO and de facto control over the Bratunac police forces authorized the TO and the Bratunac police forces to disarm the Bosnian Muslim population in the village of Glogova. From that point, Glogova was not only a disarmed, but also an undefended village. On or about the 27th of April 1992, Milutin Milosevic, chief of the Serb SUP, speaking on behalf of Miroslav Dironic, told the villagers that Glogova would not be attacked because they had turned over their weapons. At a crisis staff meeting at the 8th of May 1992, Miroslav Deronic announced that the operation against Glogova would be carried out the following day. He explained the strategic significance of taking Glogova. The plan to create Serbian ethnic territory could not be implemented in the municipality of Bratunac without first taking Glogova and displacing its entire Muslim population to non-Serb territory. He emphasized that if there is, was no resistance from the Muslim residents of Glogova, they should all be brought to the center of the village and transported by bus and truck to Kladan outside the municipality of Bratunac. Miroslav Deronic also stated that if everything went well in Glogova, the operation to permanently remove Bosnian Muslims would continue the following days in the town of Bratunac and inter alia the communities of Voljavica and Suha. At this session of the crisis staff, Miroslav Deronic, in his capacity as its president, gave the order to attack the undefended and disarmed village of Glogova, burnt it down, and forcibly displaced its Bosnian Muslim residents, taking into account and accepting the substantial likelihood that some of them be killed during the attack. 
The names of 64 unarmed Bosnian Muslim residents from Glogova, executed by a member of the attacking forces on the 9th of May 1992, are known to the trial chamber. These names are listed in section 12 of the judgment. The attack on Glugova was a joint operation coordinated and monitored by Miroslav Deronic. The attacking forces were members of the GNA, the Bratunac TO, the Bratunac police and other paramilitary forces. The attacking forces removed the Bosnian Muslim civilians from their homes by force and displaced them from the village of Glogova. Specifically, women and children who survived the attack were placed on buses and expelled to Muslim-held territory outside the municipality of Bratunac. Neither the indictment nor the factual basis specifies in detail what happened to the victims during the attack and on and after their transport. The accused pleaded guilty to the fact that during the attack on Glogova he was present while the attacking forces systematically set fire to the Bosnian Muslim houses, buildings, fields and haystacks, causing the wanton and extensive destruction of Bosnian Muslim dwellings, businesses and personal property in the village of Glogova. He accepted the foreseeable consequences that the mosque was also destroyed. As a result of the attack ordered by Miroslav Deronic, a substantial part of Glogova was razed to the ground and no Muslims were left in the village. The trial chamber wishes to emphasize that it is not ceased of the continuation of the operation throughout the entire municipality of Bratunac implementing the same plan. On the 10th of May 1992, the operation continued in the town of Bratunac and Inter Alia, the communities of Voljavica and Suha. Between the 8th and the 12th of May 1992, according to the accused, in total 100 to 200 people were killed in the municipality of Bratunac. On the 10th or the 11th of May 1992, Miroslav Deronic was invited to Pale to report about the events in Glogova and or in the municipality of Bratunac. Present at the meeting in Pale were Radovan Karadzic, Vilibor Ostojic and Radko Malic, Mladic, as well as some 50 other participants, including the presidents of the crisis staff from other municipalities. On the wall behind them were maps that identified the ethnic composition of areas in Bosnia and Herzegovina in various colors. Serb areas were designated in blue. After having given his report and having shown his municipality on the map, Miroslav Dironic was applauded and Vilibor Ostojic commented, now we can color Bratunac blue. The trial chamber will now discuss the gravity of the crime and aggravating circumstances. The trial chamber agrees with the prosecution 
that the crime for which Miroslav Deronich is to be sentenced is precisely the type of crime about which the Security Council expressed its grave alarm in Resolution 808. The events in Glogova on the 9th of May 1992 are a classical case of ethnic cleansing and precisely the reason why the Security Council established this tribunal. The attack on Glogova was not an isolated or random event, but a critical element in a larger scheme to divide Bosnia and Herzegovina and create Serb ethnic territories. End of quote. The trial chamber also concurs with the prosecution that the crime of persecutions to which the accused has pleaded guilty is inherently very serious. The trial chamber takes in the following factors into account when evaluating the gravity of the crime and aggravating circumstances for determining the sentence. The large number of victims, Miroslav Deronich's abuse of his superior, superior position as a political leader in the municipality of Bratunac, his authorization of the disarmament of the citizens of Glogova, his role in ordering and his action during the attack on Glogova based as regards the ethnic cleansing on a direct intent. The special vulnerability and helplessness of the ambushed victims of the attack. The trial chamber in particular takes into account the long-term effects of the attack on the victims of Glogova and their relatives. Many of the former residents of Glogova suffered to this day from the lasting effects of the horrors of the attack on their village and state, as far as it has been disclosed by the prosecutor to the trial chamber in Taalia. It's getting from bad to worse every day. Another one. Sometimes it is so difficult that you wish that you had not survived. Another victim. I wish that I could go to sleep at night. I have pain all over my body and I have to keep the windows open as I feel that I would suffocate otherwise. When I do go to sleep, I wake up often because of nightmares about the Chetniks who are chasing us. Only a few nights ago, I woke up screaming after seeing such a nightmare and could not explain to my children what I had seen. Another victim. I have flashbacks during some nights and uh, I do not have sound sleep. I wake up and think that the war is still on and run for shelter. Sometimes I run out of the house. That is the reason that I sleep only on the ground floor. Another victim. My youngest son who is about 23 years old, is also suffering and has health problems. I had managed to hide him, to hide him in my clothes. In the day, Glogova was attacked while the men were being killed. He has been very badly affected by this. He cannot go to sleep and his legs go numb. I am afraid that he might lose his mind. He often has nightmares and after he wakes up from the runs to the window to get some fresh air. He sometimes cannot dare to go back and try to sleep on his own. Another witness. 
finally. I have myself gone to Glovgova for about ten times, and each time when I come back from that place, I feel that I am dead. I cannot help remembering that my daughter, who was just 13, was taken away by soldiers. In conclusion, taking into consideration only the gravity of the crime and all the accepted aggravating circumstances, the trial chamber unanimously finds that only the ex on extremely serious punishment could be imposed. There are, however, mitigating circumstances to which the trial chamber will now turn. The prosecution correctly submits that mitigating circumstances relate to the assessment of a penalty but do not derogate the gravity of the crime. Child Chamber focuses mainly on the guilty plea of the accused and the substantial cooperation by the accused, but gives consideration to all mitigating factors presented by the parties, that is, remorse, the accused character and behavior, and finally is his contribution to prevent all attempts to revise history. The trial chamber recognizes the importance of Miroslav de Ronich's guilty plea as his acceptance of individual criminal responsibility. The trial chamber in this respect accepts the submission by the defense on the importance of the admission of guilt and that, quote, the most important is to prove that a crime was committed and therefore to unmask the policy on any of the three sides which led to this crime. In this sense, a sentence is a relative category because there is no sentence that can give the victims full satisfaction for their losses." End of quote. The trial chamber concludes that Miroslav de Ronich's guilty plea and his readiness to testify in other trials assists the tribunal in its search for the truth. It also shelters the victims and witnesses from testifying about painful and traumatic events, thereby reopening old wounds. The trial chamber accepts the submission by the prosecution that the accused substantial cooperation resulted in providing unique and corroborative information to the prosecution, giving testimony in other proceedings before the tribunal, providing original documentation and identifying new crimes and perpetrators unknown to the prosecution. The trial chamber takes into consideration the fact that the accused has testified in other proceedings before this tribunal, namely as a court witness in the Momi Nikolis sentencing hearing, the Krisic appeal and the Blagovic at Ali E trial, and a prosecution witness in the Milosevic and Kreisnik trials. It is not for this trial chamber to assess the evidence in other proceedings before this tribunal. However, the trial chamber has to recall that the accused himself acknowledged that he had given partly untruthful statements in his prior interviews with the prosecution. Considering all the above mentioned mitigating circumstances and giving particular importance to the guilty plea and the substantial cooperation, the trial chamber is satisfied that a substantial reduction of the sentence is warranted. As part of the plea agreement, the prosecution recommended a term of imprisonment of 10 years. The defense made a recommendation 
that a sentence of not more than six years of imprisonment is an appropriate sentence for the accused. May I now ask you, Mr. Deronich, please stand up. For the foregoing reasons, having considered all, the, all of the evidence and the arguments of the parties, the trial chamber, having heard your guilty plea, Mr. Miroslav Deronic, and having entered a finding of guilt for the crimes contained in the charge of persecutions in the second amended indictment, hereby enters a single conviction against you Mr. Miroslav Deronich, for persecutions, a crime against humanity, incorporating the attack on the village of Glogova, the killing of Bosnian Muslim civilians in Glogova, the forcible displacement of Bosnian Muslim civilians of Glogova from the municipality of Bratunac, the destruction of an institution dedicated to religion, the mosque in Glogova, and the destruction of Muslim civilian property in Glogova. We sentence you, Mr. Miroslav Tironic, by majority, Judge Schomburg dissenting, to 10 years of imprisonment and state that pursuant to Rule 101C of the rules, you are entitled to credit for the period during which you are detained in custody, calculated from the date of your deprivation of liberty, that is the 6th of July 2002, including any additional time you may serve pending the determination of an appeal, if any. Pursuant to Rule 103C of the rules, you shall remain in the custody of the tribunal pending the finalization of arrangements for your transfer to the state where your sentence will be served. You may be seated. Let me briefly summarize my dissenting opinion. I have authenticated this judgment as presiding judge. I regret that as a member of the bench, for fundamental reasons, I am not able to support the sentence. The sentence is not proportional to the crimes it's based on and, using a well-known English idiom, the sentence imposed amounts to singing from the wrong hymn sheet. The accused deserves a sentence of no less than 20 years of imprisonment. <coughs> there are two main reasons leading me to the conclusion that the imposed sentence recommended by the prosecutor is not within mandate and spirit of this tribunal. First, already the series of indictments, including the second indictment, arbitrarily presents facts selected from the context of a larger criminal plan and, for unknown reasons, limited to one day and to the village of Glogova only. Second, even based on these fragments of facts, the heinous and long-planned crimes committed by a high-ranking perpetrator do not allow for a sentence of only 10 years, which may possibly even be a de facto deprivation of liberty of only six years and eight months, taking into account the possibility of an early release. As no victim or relative of a victim has been given the opportunity to address this tra um, trial chamber in person, I should like to give the last word to one of them who has stated, 
I saw Miroslav Deronich plead guilty on the television. The Bosnian Muslims in the community that I have spoken to felt relieved because he admitted his guilt. This is a positive thing and can heal the wounds of the community provided that he is punished adequately. A mild punishment, however, would not save, serve any purpose. He does not deserve any compassion as he did not show any, not only to the people of Glogova, but also to the other Muslim Bosnians of Bratunac and Srebrenica. May I ask the usher please to distribute copies of the judgment to the parties? This concludes the proceedings in this case before trial chamber two. All rise for your vulvae.